speaks of existence of a suit or hearing debt for their response or attendance. So, based on the clerk's communication, the Honorable Minister was served. Whether she's uh, reasons to why she has not come are still unknown to this committee. However, the committee will proceed ex parte. She was invited to attend this proceeding. She's supposed to attend tomorrow as well to defend uh, herself. Whatever will be presented here today and uh, whatever evidence was submitted to her when the move of the motion laid, uh, presented this motion on the floor. So, honorable members, are you comfortable yeah. that she was served? Uh, that's maybe just one, two things. She's not serving her afresh, but she has the right to access all the evidence that is presented before this committee. Like I read in Rule 108 of our Rules of Procedure, However, that cannot stop us from uh, proceeding. Uh, where a person is served with a court process and does not appear, court is allowed to proceed ex parte and determine the matter in question. I refer you to a case, Fox O'Doy versus the uh, AG Constitutional Petition Number 54 of 2013. The Constitutional Court held that the right to be heard is limited to the opportunity to be heard. And where a tribunal avails to an individual an opportunity to be heard and that individual fails or refuses to appear before it, it cannot be stated that he or she was denied a right to be heard. So we will proceed ex parte. Uh, like you have heard, we served uh, using the right procedure and this cannot stop us from proceeding. So without wasting much of the time, the clerk, honorable members wanted the date uh, and the time of the email and the email address. Seven AM. Eleven twenty-seven AM. Okay. Eleven twenty-seven. Now, the honourable. Much uh, honourable chair. Uh, <clears throat> to be very specific and direct to your question, the grounds that we are proceeding on is a misconduct and misbehaviour then abuse of office. Those are the two grounds we want to establish. And then maybe the last one could be contempt of parliament. Thank you so much. What grounds were captured in your motion? Precisely is misconduct and misbehavior. So, because we cannot alter the motion right now, the motion was presented on the floor, so we cannot co-opt abuse of office right now, you are supposed to be providing us with evidence on the grounds that were presented in your motion on the floor. 118 of the, Article 118 of the Constitution, one, Parliament may by resolution supported by more than half of, it, of all its members of Parliament pass a vote of censor against a minister on any of the following grounds. A, abuse of office, B, misconduct or misbehavior, which you have just mentioned. Therefore, um, I believe the ground is located for in our constitution and we can proceed. Do we have any objection, honorable members? Motion within a committee city. We are going to look at the evidence you produce in relation to the grounds that were in the motion, and that is misconduct and misbehavior. I earlier told you we are trying to establish a prima facie case. This committee is quasi judicial. What this means is we, we want you to provide the ingredients of this evidence. The evidence you provide before us 
should be enough in the prima facie case should be enough to convict someone should they fail to put in their defense so can you kindly proceed now and explain to the honorable members with the evidence show us the ingredients of this evidence if you permit then i give the talking point to members then i start with your permission Thank please you. proceed uh, my document has been signed on all the pages as we proceed with this committee meeting i am imploring all of you to avoid any language that may be seen to purport bias be it the movers of the motion or the seconders like I said, we are just here to establish a prima facie case within the evidence you are going to submit. The Honorable Minister is innocent and uh, until proven guilty. So, can the mover please proceed? In my presentation, there are some areas where I would say these are the, but given your wise ruling, I want to lay on table reports of the Rules Committee privileges and discipline of Parliament, the committee procedure chair. Procedure? I believe you are, you are not going to use those documents to make your presentation, are you? Uh, no, I will not use them for the presentation, but it entails in the presentation that I will be communicating. Procedure, uh, Mr. Chairman. You know, uh, being from some background, I had thought the honorable member would first of all lay for us the ingredients of his major ground, that's uh, misconduct and misbehavior. And then, instead of going through preambles, give us the evidence per each ingredient and lay it to us. You know that save time and to contain the rule of relevance. In fulfillment of the summons I received from the club to the committee, inviting me to appear before this honorable committee on matters involving the censor of honorable persons Namuganza, Princess, State Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development Housing. I am accompanied by members of parliament who supported the motion for the censor of honorable persons Namuganza, Princess. State Minister for Lands, Housing, Urban Development, Housing, and I am grateful to them. Honorable members, you will recall that on the 9th December 2022, I notified the clerk to Parliament of my intention to move the motion to Senator Honorable Namoganza on grounds of misconduct and misbehavior as prescribed in Article 1181B of the Constitutions. In accordance with the rules of procedure of Parliament, I solicited and obtained signatures of at least one third of the members. And following my compliance with the rules of procedure, I was authorized and on the 23rd December 2022, I move a motion in the House for censor of Honorable Princess Namokanza Princess, a State Minister for Lands, Housing, and Urban Development Housing. The motion I move for the censor of Honorable Princess Namokanza, a State Minister for Lands, Housing, and Urban Development, arose from the unbecoming and becoming contact of Honorable Namuganza and the need to restore the dignity, respect, and independence of Parliament in light of attacks from some people like her, 
who through their actions have denigrated public trust and confidence in the integrity of the members and the institution of parliament and brought the house and its members into disrepute. And members, you will recall that on the first, on the first March 2022, parliament constituted an ad hoc committee to investigate the Nakawa Nagurland allocations on the persons who were adversely mentioned by the committee, I beg my pardon, remember repeat that point. And remember, you will recall that on the 1st March 2022, the Parliament constituted an ad hoc committee to investigate the Nakawa Nagorolan allocation. One of the persons who were adversely mentioned by the committee was Honorable Namoganza, whom the ad hoc committee found to have abused our office and authority by directing Uganda Land Commission to allocate land to some entities. The committee recommended that Honorable President Namoganza be held accountable. You will further recall that on the 18 May 2022, Parliament adopted the report of the ad hoc committee on the Naguru Nakawa land allocation, including the recommendation that Honorable President Nabogaza be held accountable. Following the adoptions of the report and recommendations, and instead of Honorable Namogaza being remorseful, apologetic, and taking lessons from the matters that led to the above findings, she made statements about Parliament in the media and on social media attacking the operations of parliament, questioning the powers of parliament, the integrity of the presiding officers of parliament, and imputing improper motive to parliament and its presiding officers. These allegations were raised at the seventh sitting of the first meeting of the second session of the 11th parliament held on Wednesday, the 13th July, 2022, by Honorable Selwanya Solomon, the MP Bukole County Central. And then the presiding officer referred the matter to the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Discipline to examine and report back to the House, to the House within two weeks. The Committee on Rules privileges and discipline instituted investigations into the matter and heard from and received evidence from member of parliament members of parliament including honorable selwanya who was supported by the testimonies of honorable saro pendi honorable eliza okupa and the administrators of the 11 parliament official whatsapp group and honorable Kibolier, Henry, Maurice, that articulated and presented evidence to the committee. With evidence proved that Honorable Namoganza had made derogatory statements about Parliament during a television interview with NTV Uganda regarding the report of the Naguru Nakawa land allocations. The committee also observed that the statements made by Honorable Namoganza on social media imputed improper motives to Parliament and its presiding officers and were, and were therefore an affront to the dignity Parliament. They demigrated public trust and confidence in the integrity of, of the office of the Speaker members and the institution of parliament and brought the house and its members into disrepute. In addition, the statements on Romogans are made in an interview with NTV were contemptuous, the meaning of the institution of parliament and undermine its authority. The committee found that the conduct and behavior of Honorable Namogaza constitutes gross misconduct and misbehavior and is not befitting of a member of parliament, more so 
a minister. The committee recommended that the House invokes Articles 118, 1B of the Constitutions and Rules 106 of the Rules of Procedural Parliament to censor her. The House adopted the report of the committee on the 7th December 2022. Honorable members, you will recall that on 7 December 2022, Honorable Namoganza was granted an opportunity to apologize to the House, the institution of Parliament, the presiding officers of Parliament and members of Parliament, and in spite pleas from many members of Parliament, including from senior member of Cabinet, the Prime Minister, and various other members of the Agas House, Honorable Namoganza refused to render an apology to the House. The refusal by Honorable Namoganza to apologize shows an unrepentant person who is unwilling to learn from experience and take responsibility for their actions. Sin apologizing is part of the seeking humility. And humility is a character quality God holds in high esteem. I can refer you for those who read the Bible when you can go to James chapter number 4 and uh, which says humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will exalt and excuse you. Apologizing humble us by reminding us that we are not perfect and we need forgiveness from God and from men or oh people. Following the refusal by Honor Namokansa to run an apology to the House, I decided to take a steps to implement the parliamentary resolutions of censor her from office, and the motion was moved. Remember, the House had also made, you cannot, we cannot just adopt the report like that. We need to take and follow our rules of procedures and the laws that govern, so that the process should move from notification onwards until the state now, now we are where we have reached. Honorable members, the decision to send a minister is not a decision that should be taken lightly, as if, as, as if it has far-reaching consequences on the minister, his or our family, the cabinet, the appointing authority, the country at large. This explains why the Constitution deem it necessary that ministers should be censors on a prescribed grounds, which I am pleased you have enumerated to it very clearly. But for the sake for the, of the people who came late, I am aware that Articles 118 provides for specific grounds for the censor of a minister. And Article 118 is reproduced below as I want to read for some of people. Parliament may, by resolution supported by more than half of all members of parliament, pass a vote of censor against a minister on any of the following grounds, abuse of office, or willful violations of the oath of allegiance, or oath of office, misconduct, or misbehavior being part B, then part C, physical and mental incapacity, namely that EOC is incapable of performing the function of his or her office by reason of physical or mental incapacity. Then the D part, mismanagement, or then the last one, incompetence. Honorable members, you realize that the motion I move in the house and the supporting judgments indicated one ground for sense of honorable persons, Namoganza, Princess, State Minister for Lands, Housing, and Urban Development, being misbehavior and misconduct. Honorable members, the conduct of honorable persons, Namoganza, Princess, was examined by the rules, privilege, and discipline in its report on the in inquiry into allegations of misconduct and misbehavior against honorable persons, Namoganza. State Minister for Lands, Housing, and Urban Development, Housing, and found, found that on the 21st, 22nd May 2022, and again 
On the 12th and 13th July 2022, Honorable President Namoka and Sir Princess made statements about Parliament in the media, on social media, attacking the operations of Parliament, questioning the powers of Parliament, the integrity of presiding officers of Parliament, and imputing improper motive to Parliament and its presiding officer. In finding Honorable Princess Namoka and Sir Princess guilty of misbehavior and misconduct, the committee received evaluations and admitted various pieces of evidence, which included A, except from the daily monitor online newspapers of the 22nd May 2022, with the aiding, I want to take now this seriously, with the aiding, Parliament has no powers to suspend me, Namukata said, which is available at the official website of the Daily Monitor, I can quote, HTTPS, www.monitor.co.ug slash Uganda slash news national slash parliament has no powers to suspend me Namokansa. Three eight two three three four six. When you go to that website, you will find what daily monitor on their interviews with Honorable Namokansa. We see he said Parliament has no powers to suspend her. Because we are here to establish a prima facie case, you have given us a very good document justifying uh, uh, the grounds. But we want to see the evidence because we have already cleared the grounds. We are aware the grounds are catered for in 118 of the Constitution, misconduct. But now we want to establish that whether that evidence actually establishes a prima facie case. Like I said, uh, in a case of burglary, the pro prosecution must be able uh, to present evidence to prove the ingredients. For example, the, the, the prosecution must be able to, prevent, uh, to present evidence that uh, shows that the defendant accessed your premises without authorization. Two, with the intent to commit burglary. And lastly, actually, stole. So we, were, we are more interested in the ingredients of this evidence and want to see this evidence. But we, in as far as the grounds are concerned, like the Honorable Bakaulindi has stated, uh, we have no problem with the grounds. More supply? Chair, as you had earlier on, uh, granted our first witness who is the approver, will now first substantiate his grounds. Now, I would request that I would think that it would be prudent that he finishes his presentation. Now he starts showing us because it's now, according to his presentation so far, they are now, it's, there are several ingredients, the evidence of the contents. So after he has presented fully this, now he starts giving us one by one that in this, this is the evidence, this is what I'm, the contents. What, uh, I think, uh, what Honorable Wako save time. Now, if he's making the presentation about the grounds and he gets to this evidence, for example, A, uh, daily monitor something, he should be able to provide it for the members to, to access and consume. Then when he goes to B, WhatsApp messages, he should be able to provide that evidence. So at the end of this presentation, we can, uh, we can react. Instead of making a presentation, then later he comes back now to present the evidence afresh. Most of life, Chair. I want to ask, whereas we know the time is very important, as we execute this mandate, we should stop saying time, time, time. We are doing this because of time. Then it will make this committee very bad. We are here 
to look into this matter and come out with a resolution to Parliament. But if we continue saying time, time, then it would be one of the ground for someone to say they even didn't have time, they were just going through things the way they want because of time. Now, now I don't think it's about time. Just agreeing on how to proceed. If you tell the, the committee that uh, in finding Honorable Pastor Namganza guilty, they, they found Pastor Honorable Pastor Namganza guilty of misbehavior and misconduct, the committee received and evaluated and admitted various pieces of evidence, which included, and you state it without giving it to the committee. It is not evidence. So I think it is, uh, there is no problem with how we are proceeding. When you, when you talk about something, provide the evidence for members to go show. Uh, uh, there was a bit of distraction, I could say, but still, on in the findings, and I say a component was about when the Daily Monitor wrote that. Honorable Namugata said Parliament has no powers to suspend me. First of all, I quoted the line where committee can go and verify it. But we took a point also to print with we are privileged to lay on table. B component WhatsApp messages that from the official WhatsApp group no, of the 11th I Parliament. Direct there. I don't have to replay directly there. It's already the 11th Parliament official WhatsApp group. And uh, Honorable Chair, some of this okay. evidence that we are producing was examined. And the committee went thoroughly. And if you were to allow me to keep reading, I was, I was going to put before you the all sham report of the rules of privileges, including even this, which I'm mentioning one by one. Yeah, uh, Honorable Court, we are not interacting with the committee on rules. We are interacting with the movers and seconders of the motion to censor Honorable Passes in Amugan. So whatever evidence you give us is your evidence. We, we cannot now go and look for the committee on rules to provide evidence for us. So you must own the evidence you are going to give this committee. Whether or not this evidence you give us is admissible will be entirely up to the committee. Since the committee report of the committee on rules and disciplinary privileges is already a public document. It was submitted to Parliament and Parliament adopted it. If you are sure that it has all those attachments, it is sufficient under the evidence act to lay it as it is in the sum instead of going into the piece made pieces of evidence in that report. So the report alone would be admissible if you have it. Chair, can I proceed? Section uh, 79 of the Evidence Act states, presumption as to document produced as recorded as a record of evidence. Whenever a document is produced before any court purporting to be a, a record or memorandum of any evidence given in a judicial proceeding or before any officer authorized by law to take evidence required by law to be required, to be reduced, sorry, to writing and purported to be signed by any judge or magistrate or by any such officer as aforesaid, a court may presume that the document is genuine and that the evidence recorded was the evidence actually given, may take oral evidence of the proceedings and the evidence given and shall not be 
precluded from admitting any such documents merely by reason of the absence of any. So, uh, like Honorable Nwagaba stated, if at all you are, you are sure that the report contains all this evidence, you can lay the report on table. Thank you so much. Uh, <coughs> that was the law I also made my presentation. But of course, when you are in a meeting, Honorable Chair, you have to go by the rules that has been set at that particular point. Uh, permit me also, Honorable Chair, to say on the C component, video recordings of the interview Honorable Namuganza held with NTV Uganda, which heard on NTV Hosawa Emu and NTV Weekend. <laughs> and NTV Weekend Edition bulletins respectively on Friday the 21st May 2022. The day where the move became a problem. I therefore beg to lay the report of, of the Committee of Rules, Privileges and Discipline relating to the inquiry into allegation of misconduct and misbehavior against Honorable Persis Namuganza, State Minister for Lands, Housing, and Urban Development, and the attachment referred to in the report, or assembly. I beg to lay. Everything, everything. Is that I've just presented. I request the committee to admit in the following new pieces of evidence as well. Video recording of the interview of Honorable Namoganza held with NPS on the 9th December 2022, found at the official NBS YouTube channel at www.youtube.com.watch question vast hm. A S P L P four Z one Y, where she again accused the presiding officers of parliament of bias, defiling the constitution, and declaring parliament parliament's consideration of the report of the committee on rules, privilege, and discipline in its report on the inquiry into allegation of misconduct and misbehavior against Honorable President Namukansa, Princess State Minister for Land, Housing and Urban Development, Housing and Constitutional. She also accused the presiding officer of having a personal vendetta against her, a matter she has repeated on several occasions without substantiating. And that is not acceptable because it will bring the, the, the parliament into this repute. And I have that video recording. First of all, if you follow the YouTube of NBS, we shall find it. But as NBS was also broadcasting it, I took my time and I was recording. And if it is good enough for you to watch it, I have it. I've already served uh, our uh, what uh, happened to the is that I had shot Kanyanet and the Attorney General had been served. By doing that, I wasn't meaning that uh, I was avoiding anything. I just like any other person is agreeing that they have tabled the report which you feel you don't agree with. I went to the Constitutional Court. Uh, the proceedings of yesterday were uh, unconstitutional. Because the presiding officer uh, said I had not served him and he had been in office the whole day. And yet, Article 200, I think 50, Article 250 says service of someone from that attached, attached government will be served on that region. And it's in the constitution. And we hold this constitution when we are swearing him. So the presiding officer and that's right General Thomas Taiwa yesterday overthrew this constitution. He defined it because remember our oath is that I will be 
defend, I will preserve, defend, protect, and uphold the Constitution at all times. There's something that you mentioned. Yes. You're going to move a motion against uh, the Speaker, Anita Mok, and Honorable Mabogo, and saying this are turned personal. Many are wondering how this comes in within your situation, but also very importantly, again, we ask how this now, who is which one, you feel like you're being which hunted, and by whom? I, uh, I intended to move that motion, and I will seek uh, I mean, permission by the speaker uh, in the near future, because these issues, the way they have been happening, of course, the right honorable the speaker, Mong, has a personal interest in this. She procured the fraudulent marriage uh, with the so-called husband. You know, a husband is defined legally. And he went and uh, to my husband, because he's a civil servant, and he forced him to sign papers of their marriage. They were not there. They sent their saturated team, and they, <laughs> they made him sign an address. I think I'm, you understand when I say that. And after all that happened, he reported to security and they sent it in the marriage. So she sent several people intimidating him, doing one that he must sign and, and retract uh, the papers that were sending here at the council as a of marriage. Because you see, the law gives, uh, I think, about 28 hours when you have signed such papers and appeals. A matter which we have brought the attention of the president of the president, and he has instructed the CID uh, headquarters to investigate. My husband has already made the um, statement, but she has been sending rascals to my husband and intimidating him. He's saying how I'm going to punish your wife, and we have proof. Do you think this has turned away from what? Because this came from uh, the Rules and Privileges, Privileges Committee over the land question. Now you're bringing in personal matters. Do you think, what do you think exactly is the issue? Is this more personal than it is? You see, uh, the other thing that I'm working with is very sensitive industry. Many of those who are talking like that, if I tell you behind the camera, you will not believe it. But what I want to say, Josephine, is that me as a person who saw it to protect, you say, you know that you can even fight for the constitution. That's why people get guns and they put the bush. I cannot see the constitution being raped, being violated by the, the, the parliamentary leadership. But if you're sensitive. And I keep quiet. But if you're sensitive, are you ready to be, to let it go? That's why I've told you, whatever is happening now, the proceedings of censure, they are illegal. They are unconstitutional. We have matters pending in court. In the constitutional court, and in the Court of Appeal. So I, I expect the parliamentary leadership, which, the, which they, they say they are lawyers, are not sure. If they were, they would have known that they are violating the words of the Constitution. And let me allow me to say this. The parliamentary leadership wants to create failure and intimidation among the members of parliament so that they don't say anything. They, they, you know, they are so timid that they don't even have to exercise their rights, they are working under that fear. Something which is very unfortunate. So for me, if I find the presidential directive, or whatever they are saying in Nagula, and here I am, the president is also alive, he's not dead, he's alive, he's still here. I have not seen them going with that forged document to the president and say, see, your minister is here, forged this. Because the forger is criminal. And why am I bringing the motion of Rambo? He's criminal. She never appeared in the of oath. She never followed the merit steps. She said certificates. Where are the measure the support sign? The, the security guards uh, signed. The best mark something. We cannot have such leadership. Go on. that the right honorable speaker of yeah, parliament. Just a matter of procedure. Because uh, Earlier I told you each contentious issue during the committee meetings must be considered on the balance of probabilities for the right decision to be taken. You have laid, uh, you have just presented a document with so many issues. Now I'm going to request you to lay that, that a flash drive or something that contains that video on table. 
Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, previously, I say, in addition to the above evidence that I've presented before, there's a video recording of the interview held by Honorable Namukanza with NBS. And then I invited you to the YouTube link. And even I say, when it was being played, I took it and came upon me, at least to pick it as well. Now I have presented to you. I wanted to do the due diligence and point out some few misconduct and misbehaviors that appeared in that thing to the committee, if you permit me. One, to say the speaker overthrow the constitution. Procedure, procedure. Two, procedure, procedure. Chair. I was saying in the first one that I presented, we also are saying the speaker of, and the leader of our parliament has overthrown the constitution. Number two, she even say the speaker has defiled the constitution and rep. She cannot see parliament rapping the constitution. She even mentioned again and said that member of parliament are working under intimidations and fears. I am a member of parliament of the 11th parliament of the, the Republic of Uganda. And since I was sworn in, until today, I have not seen anybody putting me under fear to do my work and duties of oversight, allocations, or budget appropriation, representations, and all other works that is incumbent on me as a member of parliament. Whenever I go to the committee, whenever I move to the field to do oversight duty, nobody give me and put me under fear. This is a misconduct, misbehavior, which is not called for. Mr. Uh, Honorable Chair, the big component of additional evidence that I want to adduce, the answers of the proceedings of the House of Wednesday, the 7th December, 2022, where in Honorable Princess Nebuchadnezzar Princess refused to apologize. Members have been urging her. The Prime Minister was there. And the way she behaved, the way she acted, the, the, even after when she moved. And on the same flast, I have the recordings of that, if she can play it, would be so good. Uh, Minister, as exhibited, and it is in the public domain, not only in the public domain, and is everywhere. I did move so closely to examine whether this was one of, or it is a concurrent behaviors, which is not called for. And indeed, as a member of parliament, and many others, leaders in this nation, we find that is not called for. You remember, we are being governed by rules, and the conducts of leaders have to be adhered for. If you permit me, let uh, the, the, the video person down with the computer can play. Oh, I think, sir. Thank you. I, my, my colleague is saying I should continue, then we play later. Okay. Thank you. Procedure. The member is referring to past conduct. This is the 11th parliament. Are you talking about the conduct in the 11th parliament or conduct before the 11th parliament? Because if it is before the 11th parliament, then it shouldn't be part of the evidence we are used here. Chair, you, I want to bring to your memory that there are many evidences that have been presented. And even I say, video recordings, beside all what have been put in, we have been examining, I have been examining the current situations, the behaviors, and all the conducts he had already exhibited within now. And I say, no, let me move, wait a minute, let me move one step backward and see. Could it be that this kind of behaviors is one of that I'm witnessing now Oh, there has also been a similar kind of now, behavior. Now, Honorable Court, the question was, are you using uh, the past 
character of the Honorable Minister to this justify... Is general, this is a general behavior that is leading towards misconduct and continuous kind of... Character cannot be admissible. Past character cannot be admissible. And that's what Honorable Nwaga, I think, is referring to. You cannot refer to someone's character in the Tenth Parliament to justify uh, this censor motion. You look at, uh, I think it is 50, the Evidence Act, 50, 51 and 52. Um, in civil cases, character to prove conduct imputed irrelevant. In civil cases, the fact that the character of any person concerned in su is such as to render probable or improbable any conduct imputed to him or her is irrelevant, except in so far as the character appears from facts otherwise relevant. When you look at 52, bad character in criminal proceedings only relevant in certain circumstances. In criminal proceedings subject to section 1332 of the Magistrates Courts Act and section 98 of the trial on uh, Indict, indict, indictment Act, the fact that an accused person has a bad character is re irrelevant unless a evidence has been given or a question or questions asked by the accused person or his or her advocate for the purpose of showing that he or she has a good character. So for you to refer to the past character, you would need the Honorable Minister to be here and actually talk about her character. Supplementary? Yeah.